For real, there's so many pairs. So many pairs. Nope. Nope. Still good. It's still good. So I know what you're probably thinking. You're thinking, oh, Jody, you're so smart. How did you get so smart and handsome? Right? Well, I can explain some of that. With your, when you're doing your mud or your tile adhesive, it's called mud. It's not really mud, but we just call it mud in the business, you know? Because I'm, I'm not in the business. I'm totally kidding. Okay, so how much is too much? I don't know. It's how, it depends on how fast you can go. Just use enough for, you know, five to 10 minutes worth of tiling to where it's still sticky, you know, sticky. Anyway, so you can get a big, huge scoop. And then what you can do a lot of times is get the flat side of the trowel and like just kind of spread it on there and then come back with the teeth side at a 45, I'm not doing that right now. You're always gonna push it against the wall at a 45 degree angle. If you don't know what that is, you shouldn't be putting tile up on your wall. You want every bit of the tile to have a line of mud on there so that it can stick to the tile and the wall. And um, if you're doing floor tile, uh, you need to wait like 24-ish hours before you walk on it, let it really set. I'm not gonna walk on the walls, so, so that doesn't really apply here. You know, not walking on walls. One thing I suggest you do is, is clean your tools whenever you're done because now it's dirty. So we are back. All clean, ready to go. What I'm doing here is, well, this was from yesterday. Spacing them the same width uh, grout line as the floor has. The, these were built in. These are. 12 by 12 sheets on the floor. These are not, so it takes a little longer, but I like doing the wall more than I like doing the floor. I don't know why. All right, so it's gonna keep going up. up here uh, on the wall and make sure you kind of wiggle it a little bit to make sure that it really gets a good seal and connection from the tile adhesive to the tile so it can adhese, adhese, adhese. So my daughter came in and asked me if these were like pins when you're sewing, keeping things in line and I said well sort of, said, yeah it's exactly the same. No. This doesn't keep the tile onto the wall, the adhesive does. So you want to make sure you get a good grip. This just spaces it out so you don't have to eyeball it, you know? Because everyone's going to come in your bathroom and judge you. So just prepare for that. you know, if they ever rip this down. Like a, like when you stick one of those things, and what's that thing called? Like one of those things you do in school and you bury the capsule, time capsule, and you, anyway. I 
would like to take this opportunity to say that this is all how I do it. Um, before you do any kind of construction remodeling, check your local codes, talk to people who actually do it, and make sure you're doing it right. This is um, just kind of, what's the word? I want to make sure that you're not going to do something and then it's messed up and because it's my fault. So don't do that. Do the right thing. So this is not going to be the wall for the shower. The shower will have a curtain all around it. So I'm not doing this like I would an actual shower tile. This is just wall tile. So it's not completely entirely waterproof. It's water resistant. Um, this drywall is the mold resistant drywall. Um, the tape that I used is this mesh tape that is mold and water resistant. Standard mud, but again, thick enough to make a complete seal. And then once the grout goes on, I will, I will come back and do a grout sealer just to kind of help with the moisture, but that's all it's for is moisture. Just because this is a going to be a humid room because of the shower and the bath area, uh, but it's not going to have water thrown up against it. Although I do have three kids, so possibly, but not consistently. So. Do your own homework. Headed to Home Depot to get some stuff for the wood ceiling. I need to seal it super good because it's going to be super moist there. Moist. Uh, sorry. Um, it's a uh, wet location because it's by the shower. So we need to get some good sealant for that and a stain to match the wood. This is probably totally silly, but there's a piece of me that can't go to the regular entrance of Home Depot because my father taught me real men go in the exit because that's where you pay. So that's where you need to go in. That's where you're going to come out. Uh, tip of the day, I guess. Another life lesson for my dad is you never walk past the clearance aisle without checking it so there's something you can't live without. You never know. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Home Depot for not kicking me out of their store for playing with their tile or for my pasty white skin. Thanks Home Depot. Um, sorry, I'm busy. So we chose the classic subway tile look. And when we went to New York, this is what it looked like. Just a standard brick pattern. What I did was I got a regular tile and I cut it, there we go, in half. So you start at one corner, you go up, and then all across it's gonna be spaced in the middle. That's like how they do bricks. That's why it's called a brick pattern. Tip of the day. I've made it up to this corner where I need to start doing a lot of cuts along this ceiling. I'm gonna have a piece of trim here. So the gap isn't hugely important, but for my own self, I like to think that I've done a good job. So lots of cuts all the way up there. Hey, so I have a couple of cuts to make on the tile saw. I figured I'd bring you guys out and show you what I am cutting with. I have a Grizzly H3390 series wet tile saw. Um, so it's great, the water reservoir is really big and it keeps the water clean longer and uh, it has a pump that sends the water up to the top of the blade. This slide makes it really easy and comfortable uh, for me to put the tile on here, set it where I need it and then slide it. I'm not, I don't have any fear of my fingers being lost. So that's a plus. Anyway, that's about it. If you want one, a link of where you can get it is in the description and go buy one because they're really cool and I like them. So should you. Cry. from the bathroom today so I needed to come out here to the farm and cut the grass again but you already saw that so you don't need to see it again it's the same but while I was here I figured I would bring my camera and head out into the forest and see if there's anything exciting to take a picture of we'll find out <music> Hot 
this part of the summer, the brush gets really thick. Change of plans. I am not dressed for forest trekking at the moment, um, other than my nerdy dad socks and my shorts. Um, what I think I'm gonna do is look around for just an abstract, some cool flowers. So maybe we could do a macro or some close up or just some nature versus deep into the forest because I can't make it there unless I go get my tractor, which is not a bad idea. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of macro-esque nature shots. Uh, there's a, some pretty cool berries over here and some nice yellow flowers with the background of the green. So I think that would be make for a nice, um, pleasing image to look at. Also, just found a bee's nest on the ground right where I'm about to take a picture. So I need to keep an eye out for that. I don't like bees. I don't like bees. That's an active one. It is active. Okay, we'll see what happens. The bad news, I don't like bees. And there were about a million, maybe a hundred, going in and out and in and out and flying all over me. So, mm -mm. nope, nope. What I knew I could count on was more berries because there can't just be one set of berries on this farm. So I am going to make a super shallow depth of field, aperture wide open. I have my 50 mil and I'm doing F1.4 ISO 100 and there's a vine. I'm, I'm weirded out by the bees. Okay, people, I'm weirded out by the bees. It may make it too, too narrow of a depth of field, but um, we'll see. We'll see. I might want a little bit more in focus. Um, speed is like 1 640th. It's super quick uh, because it's kind of bright today. So anyway, we'll see what it looks like. Two second timer and here we go. That's nice. couple shots of the day whenever I was mowing today um, I saw all this super cool grass it's just straight as it can be and really thin I don't know what kind of grass it is straight thin grass I just thought it was really cool looking and um, since I'm going for some abstract photography today I thought that the shapes and the lines are good and I like them so uh, I'm gonna try one with my 50 mil um, again I'm gonna try really really thin aperture just to get a little bit of it in focus so I'm at 1.6 uh, 100 ISO and since it's super bright super wide aperture I'm at like 1 8,000th of a second for shutter speed so super fast anyway I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna get my uh, 14 to 24 millimeter out so here's the shot that's cool I like that Okay, so for this shot, uh, I put my 14 to 24 millimeter on there. I'm at 16 millimeters. So if I was super wide, I would get the shadow from my camera, uh, as well as some of the tripod and some of the trees over there. It's super wide. So I'd cut it back just to 16 millimeters. I'm at f2.8. I'm doing just like I said, like last time, just the tips of the grass. It's at 1 1250th of a second. Um, which is actually going to help with the wind. It's a little tiny bit breezy, so the grass is moving, so it's going to help uh, cut that movement down. Two second timer. We'll see what it looks like. It's kind of cool. I like that too. Abstract day. <laughs>
So the pears are ripe. I forgot about the pears. I can't reach them all. Um, here's one. I can reach this one. She's just in good sized pears. But they actually ripen off of the tree. Um, they like finish ripening. So if you were to like eat these or can them or put them in a salad or whatever, uh, they're not gonna be that good. There's a leaf on my shoulder. Uh, so what you want to do is pick them and if you want to ripen them quick then you put them in a paper bag with an apple or banana something that um, puts a lot of those gases the gas the gases I don't know what it's called anyway it releases some gases and it causes things to ripen quicker but keep an eye out on it because it'll over ripen another problem I'm having is that I can't reach hardly any of the pears. I can reach some of them. I even pulled my truck underneath the trees and stood on my truck. They're way up there. There's a light.